Port Augusta, the power city of South Australia, and the venue for electrifying football action today in round five of the Escort Cup 86. This industrial and community-minded city is the spearhead of the Iron Triangle and a major provider of electricity supply to Wyala, Port Piri and the Adelaide Plains. It's citing that the head of the Spencer Gulf has also led Port Augusta to be developed as a major home and work base for the Australian National Railways, an important connecting link on the transcontinental line joining the Indian and Pacific Oceans. Since the city's naming after Lady Augusta Young in 1852, Many fine buildings have been preserved as lasting memories of days gone by. The old and the new stand side by side, perhaps best illustrated by these two bridges spanning the gulf. The Great Western Bridge opened in 1927, now flanked by a more modern carriageway, first opened to traffic in 1972. In the football world, the Spencer Golf League is known for its tough, aggressive style of play having fostered many league players, including Glenelg's general manager Harry Kernahan and coach Graham Corns, both of whom return today as Glenelg meet Port in a battle for a grand final berth in the Escort Cup 86. everyone, Rick Keegan joining you from the Seven Sports Desk uh, in North Adelaide. Very shortly we will be crossing uh, live to Port Augusta as we continue our coverage of the Escort Cup for 1986. Uh, two games set down for decision today to end the qualifying rounds of the series. Of course the big game at Port Augusta between Port Adelaide and Glenelg, the winner of that game going straight through to the grand final come April 8. While at uh, Jamestown this afternoon, North Adelaide take on Central Districts. Now as we do await to cross live to Port Augusta, the game there scheduled to start at 2.20 this afternoon. We thought we might just relive some of the great uh, memorable clashes between Port Adelaide and Glenelg over the past few years. And one of the best of those occurred in the 1982 preliminary final. At that stage, uh, John Cale was at the helm of Port Adelaide and John Halbert was the coach of the Bays. And the game was also very notable, of course, for the appearance of one David Granger. Let's pick up some of the highlights. Stephen Williams in pursuit of it. Brother of Mark and Anthony Williams. Very strong, aggressive player to the goal square. Tim Evans with another chance, and he's marked it. Chris Duthie for Glenelg to half forward. Ivan Eckerman, very strong mark. A tremendous accelerating pace into full forward. Kernahan, front position. Danny Hughes, unable to spoil him, and then treads on him, I think. The umpire not impressed, awarding a 15-metre penalty. Holster centre half forward. Once again, Johnston in there, but McGuinness from the back. Johnston and Kernahan. Kernahan over the top. Hughes thumped it away. Sewer oh, up. It's a high tackle. That must be a free kick. It was a beautiful approach on the ball, though, by Ralph Sewer. Strong kick with his wrong foot into Kernahan. And he's marked the ball. Gets it in quickly. Give Evans a chance. Evans coming out on the lead. Flying from the back. And he's marked it again. What a wonderful pair of hands this man's got. Lunas has kicked a lot of goals. Over 50 this season. Drop punt. Too far for Kernahan. Splendid mark by Hughes. Barrett. Even now, passing and not in possession. Just knocking the ball down in front of him. Phillips and Weston. Carey didn't hold it for long. But I think the free kick's going to Weston against Phillips in any case. Ebert. Left foot. Ages in front. And this will be interesting. Left footer. Kernahan in the front spot. Great mark. And he's painted from the centre. He's picked up some important kicks around that centre. Knocked off by Kernahan. Weston can't get a good bounce. He's got some skills, though. And that is skill. Left foot by Williams. Evans on a lead. Crossed at the back. Screw punt. Johnston again getting back. Robertson from the back. McGuinness with a chance. On his wrong side. Great kick. Over the top again, Weston. Lannis continually runs around onto his right-hand side to Matt and Ernie. So, so Matt and Ernie's got one, and the Bays are eight points in front. If David Marshall comes in with the kick, he would have covered the distance easily with the 10 metres. As it is, he's, do he's done his job, and I'd say... If there was a goal, I would have said from here, but it's Stephen Kernahan. It's markable. Lanelka kicked four three to a point since quarter time. Kernahan, Sewer, Marshall, McDermott, Holtz, Glenelga full forward, Carey behind, spotting out, takes the ball and kicks the goal. 
He was scrambles. Eckerman knocks it out. Sewer showing a burst of pace. Long and strong to the goal screen. It's straight, and it's a goal. Penelgan full strike, Bruce. Long drop punt, tent kick. Weston, Goss, splendid mark. Granger underneath it, thumped it on cleverly. Here's a chance for Johnston. Great tackle by Frost, holding the ball. Maynard, Belton at the back. Belton kept his balance. Corns are still with him. Huppets with a chance. That's a magnificent goal, Bruce. Oh, what a great goal. High in the air towards Evans. It's a magnificent kick. Evans from behind. Off hands. Scouting on there. Belton for a goal. Port Adelaide 7-4. Glenelg 10-7. Huppets read it well, then threw it almost to Granger. Granger broke McFarlane's tackle and put up the elbow and collected Maynard. And Maynard will take a free kick. Greg Phillips to half forward. Cause in position. Granger. Just Desmos didn't see it. Granger just with a beautiful round arm left. This is the heat out of play. Corns can't believe that Des Foster didn't see it. Bradley, Port Adelaide now to full forward. Frost with first run at the ball. Boils it away to Cunningham. Cunningham on his left foot. One of his favourite snapshots. And Port Adelaide is still hanging in there. Bit Maynard, bit of use Corns, decided not to hook the back. Sewer and Giles. Sewer did that cleverly. It's given Holst a chance. It's six for him now. Granger got rid of Sewer behind the play. Holst towards centre half forward. Eckerman did it brilliantly. Sewer still prostrate on the ground. Even across to Hoffner. Hoffner in the centre. Long drop pass. Frost in the front this time. Here's a chance for Hubbard. Hubbard has kicked the goal. It's 10-4 to 11-8. Evert from half forward into the goal square. Evans setting himself. I think he's got it. Corns underneath it. He missed it. One of his few errors. So Granger's got the run of it. Can't pick it up. Kick. He just kicked him over there, I feel. See it in replay. There's a replay. Just kicked him over. Five points of difference. That's Stephen Barrett coming off on a stretcher, Bruce. After that incident, last year's grand final was held up in the first quarter for a similar length of time when Neville, Cal Neville Caldwell was carried off the ground. It's an emotional moment at Football Park. 11-9 to 11-4. Carey, Johnston, Sewer, Hoffner, Cunningham, Bradley and also Painter. Painter did very well. Marshall tapped it on cleverly to McGuinness. McGuinness on his wrong side, but he's strong with the right foot. That's a long kick. The bounce might have beaten Hughes. It's a goal. It's 12-10 to 11-4, and McGuinness has got two goals. But Danny Hughes seemed to have that ball covered. Granger and Corns. Corns fisted it away. Williams with a chance. Evans That's a great kick. It's a goal to Williams. It's 12-4 to 13-11, and Williams has got his first. Williams and Maynard. Maynard juggled it. I thought Williams might have touched it first, but it's going to Maynard. Strong tackle. Cunningham in the pocket. Left foot snap will go close. I think he's got it. Cunningham's goal. Port Adelaide within a kick. 13-5 to 13-11. What a goal. Two goals to Cunningham. Well, that's amazing. Phillips around his body to Harris. Harris tapped it well. That's his second good grab in a matter of minutes. Belton with a drop punt. Granger getting set. Far, far takes the mark. Granger and Corns. See, Granger got one in the back there, not paid. The fire allows it to play on. And Port Adelaide through Bradley now. Long and in, in towards Frost. Granger pushes Frost out of the road, then picks the ball up and kicks it high into the air. McFarlane from behind. And Harris marks the ball. Johnston. And and Johnston marks the ball and converts. One point the difference. Into the outer side of the ground, Holst. With an opportunity, he's pushed in the back and the umpire doesn't play a free. Back towards Huppets. He's in everything. Huppets short. Belton. Belton gives it across to Ebert. 
McInerney tackles him. Well done, Peter McInerney. And Payne at a half forward. Weston underneath it with Phillips. Carey with the base score here. They'll win it. Carey thumps it to the boundary line. And it'll be a ball in. So the two sides that have already had the draw in the competition this year are a point the difference. It's 14-5 to 13-12. 29 and a half minutes gone. Is at the end of three premierships in a row for John Cale and Port Adelaide. Phillips over the top. Cunningham. Weston. Still with it is Weston. And the siren has sounded. And the Bays are in the grand final. They've won by a point. 13-12-90. Port Adelaide 14-5-89. And Glenelg have beaten Port for the first time in a final series for eight years at Football Park. Yes, uh, great memories there from the 1982 preliminary final played at Football Park between Port Adelaide and Glenelg. Glenelg getting up by one point and uh, very joyous John Halbert there. And of course it was despair for John Cale in his uh, last game as coach for Port Adelaide. Then going across the border and of course now back here in South Australia as coach of West Adelaide. We'll take a short break. We'll be back with more after this. Welcome back. Well, very shortly, we will be crossing live to Port Augusta for this afternoon's game in the Escort Cup between Port Adelaide and Glenelg. Should be an absolute beauty. That's coming our way very shortly. In the meantime, however, while in 1982 it wasn't to be Glenelg's year under the, uh, the helm there of John uh, Halbert, 1985 was a much better year for the Glenelg supporters. Of course, as we all remember, North Adelaide began the season in a very good fashion, winning something like their first 10 games. But uh, as we go to the 1985 Grand Final, I think this is one of the best games we've seen for a long, long time. A big crowd in attendance, North Adelaide against Glenelg. There's been a couple of changes. Peter Carey started in the forward pocket in the big ruckman. He's down there alongside with Adam Garton. Of course, Garton's been a fine for Glenelg during the final series. And Coffey's up on centre wing with John Riley next to him. Premier North Adelaide fronts Glenelg in the 1985 Grand Final. A packed house, 50,000 people plus, a perfect day for football. Hen Henworth in there against Redden. The umpire has picked up a free kick immediately. And it's the Bays, I think, to go into attack through Stringer. A high tackle. Umpire Kinnear in charge. Jack side of the centre line to put the Bays into attack. It's a poor kick from the half forward line, but fortuitously it finds Maynard. Great opening by the Bays too. Redden under the ball. Henwood from behind smashes away. There's a high tackle. The lead is on from Adam Garton, but Stringer goes to the pocket looking for Copping. Riley in front. He's got the ball. Antrobus runs it over the top now. North Adelaide will try and run it out. They do, in fact, through Willie. Up it goes to Bennett. He plays it up now. Here goes Robertson. He's one of the fastest players you'll ever see. He runs through half more. That ball's coming back. He's got the first one of the game. North Adelaide go forward once and they get a big one. One goal to Glenelg, two points. He's the young brother of Riley, Stephen Riley. Over to Stephen Hay. Threw it like a ball. Over the half back line, a long kick to the half forward line. Out in front is Murphy. Over the top, Parsons, not Parsons. Really? Then Grenville Dietrich puts it up towards full forward. Parsons! Oh, what a fine mark. Carey in the game. David Kernahan sweeps it out now to Seabone. He puts it up very high. Riley under the ball. Beautiful judgment from Stephen Riley. Riley lost his footing late. Kernahan missed the run of the ball. Copping back on it. Here's a chance for Alan Stringer. Right hand ball to McDermott. This is a go for Glenelg. The kick not a good one. Oh, Hayes under that. Given McGinnis the chance, and he won't miss. Glenelg's first goal, one goal four, North Adelaide, three goals one. High tackle, and the North Adelaide player gets a free kick. Gives it across to Tiller. Looks for Androvis at centre wing. North Adelaide running over into attack now. Dangerous tackle, he's going to get one down. Oh, down he goes. A vicious tackle. A punch tackle. Up comes Androvis. Bennett. Hart. North Adelaide going in again. Oh, the short kick by Sanders was not good. And it's McDermott who sends them out of defence. The base to the half forward line. Coming across the fine mark taken by Riley. Alan Stringer. Maynard. Simons wants it, but it's going in towards Garton. Big fella up. Simons going to get the crumbs. Ducks one tackle. Slips it out. Coughing ought to be a goal. Open goal coming up. Fine shot. Beautiful handball. 
will take the tap for North Adelaide. No, really it'll be. Carey. The handball out. Hard up the ground. Corey's kicked the goal. Oh. I don't think it was hard. I think it was a play. Came into the side by Ben Brearley. McGinnis is out wide. Loose jacking North Adelaide. McGinnis on his natural left leg. He likes it from here. Puts it underway. Going in long. Going in. And hits the woodwork, I think. Robertson will take off through half forward. Beautiful kick to the square. Really gets back. The punch away comes. The umpire says play on. Mr. Cool, Ross Gibbs, in the back pocket, swings it wide. Up goes Willie with a great mark. And there's a... Out on the outer side. North Adelaide to go into attack now through Freely. Comes in towards Parsons. Stepped away there by Henwood. North Adelaide a chance. Antrobus whipped out a handball. Open goal. Lay down the there. Sanders. Fine goal. Beautifully set up Antrobus. Reflex is too good at the moment. A long handball goes out there now to Brenton Phillips. Forward on Antrobus, wants the long hand ball out. Half forward, always lost his footing. Saw free. Antrobus wants back up support. He's going to get another free kick. It's straight back to Robertson. Robertson, half forward line. Get Rev on that dangerous left leg. But it was smothered. Bennett could. Dilla can. Open goal. 30 metres out. Fire goal. North Adelaide doing it on the net. Gets a lead from Kernahan. That's where the ball travels. His shadow Wildy is there. Stuck clear, stalled free to Marshall. Two bay players there on the half forward line, but Marshall, no pressure put on him, changes tack, puts out a pass, guard on him. Here's some great highlights there from the 1985 grand final at long last, the year of the Tiger, and of course, can they do it again in 1986? Well, they're off to a very good start in the Escort Cup, so let's now go live to Port Augusta. It's a big game up there today between Port and Glenelg. The winner's going straight through to the grand final at Football Park on April 8. As we go live to Port Augusta, our commentators up there this afternoon are Ian Dade, Graham Campbell and Peter Marker. Umpire John Hilton gets the game underway here at the Central Oval at Port Augusta. Port and Glenelg, Round 5, Escort Cup 7 Sport. First kick is going to go to the Port Adelaide player there in David Baker. He started off in ruck. Bomber Clifford now will put Port Adelaide into attack. They're tacking against a pretty strong breeze. Could be worth four or five. Glenelg going with it, of course. Wayne Stringer got the handball out. Max Cruz, pretty cool, but the kick wasn't. It went straight to Kim Kinnear. He's either roving or ruck roving. He was picked as a rover, and he's probably in that position. Port Adelaide have got uh, two of their rovers out. Marnie and Geneva. A chance there, Foster behind, couldn't take the mark, a good tackle. But umpire Hilton will bounce it, probably about 20 metres directly in front of the Port Adelaide goal. A vital game. The finals are on April the 8th. 85,000 up for grab. A good kick around the corner then by Russell Evans. And the goal umpire. <laughs> I don't think he meant that. It's pretty slippery out here. They tell me... Uh, Ian, quite a few weeks ago, it was a dust bowl here, but we've got a bit of grass now. The council, apparently, Peter, have done a tremendous job to get it up uh, looking like it is this afternoon, and that's a top kick-off. Gee, it just gives you an indication of how strong that breeze is. Peter Carey hooks the ball to the outer side. Marshall LeBay is going with a strong breeze. Bone McDermott through 45 metres out, goes for home with a long one. It's going to be well offline. In fact, we'll go out on the full in the right forward pocket. Incidentally, Ian, uh, Chris McDermott roving today. They've gone back to the old ploy of last year. Chris McDermott's the first rover. Robin Kidney, second rover out of the pocket. Talking about a dust bowl, yesterday up here it was 40 degrees. Mercifully, to keep the heat and the flies away, there's been a cool change. It's about 26 degrees. As David Kernahan bursts through the pack, has a shot. The umpire goes galloping again. But uh, the Bays have scored. Both teams, one point. Another surprise by the Bays. David Kernahan playing half four flank today. The wing's been manned by Scott Salisbury and David Marshall. Kimmy Hodgman has started on the interchange bench. And it looks as though Max Cruz is at centre-half back. And Wayne Hembert on the interchange bench, Peter, also. Yes, Peter Carey starting. Thank you, Graham. Peter Carey took that mark, plucked it out of the air. He goes back to centre-half forward. Garten on a lead. Plenty of players in there. Well, they're going to come out with it. That's Stephen Copping. Maynard has gone right into the pocket. Hooks back beautifully. Centred that one. Garden couldn't take the mark. Plenty of players in there. And uh, Stephen Curtis will come away with the free kick. He was jumped on. He did that well, Stephen Curtis. He doesn't get the free kick. He did it well, and he, and he got the free kick. And he didn't get the free kick. In fact, it's David Harvey. 
Baker's in front of Carey. Oh, beautiful judgment. Peter Carey's been around for a long, long, long time. He goes in short, copping on a lead. It's great to see a big man able to kick a ball like Peter Carey can. Copping probably only 45 metres from goal, but with this breeze, he will make the distance. Got a lot of accuracy there. He's pulled that one way across, but he got a point with it. Glenelg two points, Port Adelaide one point. And that's very uncharacteristic of Stephen Copping, who usually makes most chances pay. That was a very poor kick, and uh, it is rather breezy up here, though. Probably a very difficult wind to, uh, to read, Ian. Graham, I get the impression this is a dead pocket on the grandstand side. The left one, and the beige, if they want to attack, have got to go to the outer side, and yet you see that uh, Port Adelaide have kicked off to that side, so that's interesting. But very blustery indeed as the ball goes towards the half-forward line. Kidney conceding ground, down he goes. It appeared to be a push in the back. The umpire didn't see it that way. He has now, but I'm sure he called play on to start with. Doesn't matter. Kidney with the free kick from the attacking corner of the square. Guard on in the square. Thought about a lead. He's being held at the moment. Off he goes. Kidney doesn't acknowledge that lead. Goes in long. That is a huge kick. Over the top. Fine mark, Tony Hall. Gee, that went kilometres. No, we'll make that metres further than the players expected it to. Tony Hall judged it far better than anyone else, and he's got the ball five metres out right in front, and this should be the first major. There it goes. One, two, Glenelg. A point, Port Adelaide. Seven sport at Port Augusta. Glenelg, one, two. Port Adelaide, a point. In fact, Seaboam is at centre-half back for Glenelg. Max Cruz in the back pocket on uh, Hines. Seaboam on Leslie at centre-half forward. McDermott over the top, Wayne Stringer at centre wing. Got the left boot away, despite the attention from Baker. Big Jim West couldn't take the mark. He's back on it now, though. Curtis there as well. And John Simpson for Port Adelaide pushes it over the line. And a free kick for a, an intentional push over the line. We'll go to Stephen Copping. He's in the left forward pocket. Stephen Copping's first kick at goal was a terrible one he doesn't bother going for goal this time he gives it to Jim West he's at center half forward well they don't mind pushing it around Glenelg they don't necessarily stick to straight lines they move all over the place and of course Peter week ago we saw big Jim kick a goal from this position to win the game by a point yes I don't think I'll forget that uh, Graham in a hurry good goal to Jim West his first Glenelg 2-2 Port Adelaide one point yes Jim West has done it again <laughs> He just seems to be a guy that can kick a goal from anywhere these days, and uh, he took that pass from Stephen Copping, ran about between centre-half forward and full forward, went back and calmly slotted it through. Something we saw him do a, a week ago uh, at Football Park to win a game, a, a rip tickler of a game was stirred by one point. And Jim West has started the game off well today. Graham, you might have a look to see if Port Adelaide is running a loose man in defence or whether you think they might run defence because the breeze is very strong. I can vouch for that. Baker got the tap away, but a kick going into attack from Maynard up towards the half-forward line, copping in front. One, two, grabs. He thought he'd take it. The umpire said play on. Port Adelaide defending desperately. Kernahan in. He goes to ground. Tries to tunnel ball it out. Picked up by McDermott. High in towards full forward. Harvey and Gardner at the back. Here's a chance now going through Salisbury. Couldn't get out. Maynard. Maynard shoots. I think he's got it. Three to the Bays, a point Port Adelaide. Wow, what an opportunist goal that was by Peter Maynard. Picked up the falling ball as he fell to the ground, put the right foot out, extended, and just got it through between the big sticks. It was a great goal, what you might call an opportunist goal, as I said. And uh, the Bays are off to a fine start. And uh, in answer to your question, Ian, uh, Port Adelaide haven't gone defensive as yet, and it might well be <laughs> the way to go because it is a strong breeze. Worth six goals, in my opinion. 3-2 Glenelg, Port Adelaide one point. The Escort Cup on Seven Sport coming to you from the central oval here at Port Augusta. It's about 26 degrees, but a very brisk southwesterly breeze is uh, blowing towards the Glenelg goal. Southeasterly, should I say. We'll have another bounce. 25 there is Alan Stringer. Peter Carey will be against David Baker. It's right in the centre of the ground, the bounce. Peter Carey went down and he's given away a free kick. It will go to David Baker. Baker plays on. Russell Evans puts it out wide. 
Boyd is out there. Marshall ran past it. The Boyd handball comes back to Anderson. Playing in the middle for the Magpies. Foster is up there at full forward. No mark. Kinnear has got the ball. He went down very quickly. Players come in. That's Bomber Clifford. Hooks around the corner. Here's a charge. Will it bounce straight and hit the post? Well, out of luck, Port Adelaide. Two points. Glenelg is 3-2. Peter, I get the impression that we're uh, in a largely pro-Port Adelaide stand. Uh, when the two teams ran out on the ground, uh, the bigger cheer came for the Maggies. Big kick in. David Kernahan wants a running player. Jim West obliges, puts it on its way up towards Garon. Ducked away by Harvey. Kidney will be the first. A free kick by Stephen Copping. Didn't pick it up. But a free kick has gone to Stephen Copping, who was in front of the pack. And he's been awarded the free kick 25 metres out right in front. Third kick, Stephen Copping. Towards the northern end. Close. Goal. 4-2 to two points. 4-2 to two points. Glenelg leading here at the uh, Central Oval. We're almost 10 minutes into the first quarter. Big crowd has uh, come out to witness this game. Certainly well supported by the Port Augusta people and the surrounding areas. Peter Carey got it out on that occasion. Kidney puts it forward. It wasn't Kidney, it was Donovan. Bomber Clifford takes it close to the line. Salisbury working hard. Simpson came in very strongly. The ball's still in play. Bomber Clifford at the bottom of the pack there. The umpire has blown the whistle. There were a few willing clashes then. Scott Salisbury is right in the middle of it. And I think they've got a free kick for Adelaide. Certainly have, and it's John Simpson who will take it. As we mentioned before, this oval, a dust bowl a few weeks ago. It's a fair bit of grass on it now, though, fortunately. Big leap over the top. Seabone with Peter Carey as cool as you like. Took it in the left hand. He started extremely well. Third mark. West, no mark, Anderson, Bomber Clifford pushed off the ball on the kick. Ooh, that was strong and hard, that one. Smith came in late. And uh, is there a Gamel player getting up? Yeah, Scott Salisbury. The umpire's trying to clear the people away from the boundary line. Yes, it's very difficult. Uh, very enthusiastic football supporters up here. And, gee, there's a big crowd. It's a great day. It's just a little unfortunate for the locals and you viewers at home that the breeze is so strong. It's almost shades of Murray Bridge, Graham, but I don't think it's quite as strong as it was up there. No. Uh, pretty close to it, though. <laughs> About down at centre wing. Port Adelaide have attacked twice into the breeze with the result in two points. The umpire has seen a free kick for a high tackle. Umpire Mark Mackey in charge with... John Hilton, the free kick is going the way of... See, when he comes up for air, we can't see him. There's on the backpack. He's behind the uh, the coach's box there. It's Bone McDermott. Gets a long kick up towards full forward. In front is West. He can't bring the ball down. Maynard looked for possession. He lost it. Players stack up, and the umpire will come in and bounce. And I think you'll find that Port Adelaide will be pretty happy to... Uh, Keep that ball pretty well bottled up in that pocket if they can. They're down 4-2 to two points already, and we've only played about 12 minutes, so they're dragging the chain. Smith out of defence, straight towards the line, and I think that's probably on the full, is it? We just can't see. No, it's going to be a throw-in. It's a pretty good, good kick in that case. Good start to the game by Glenelg, but as we mentioned, a very strong breeze uh, supporting them. Smith in front, went over the top, Duncan went through, he missed the ball, he's come back on it now, but there's another free kick, Stephen Curtis. He copped a high one. Port Adelaide have had two chances to score. The bomber Clifford uh, kick bounced into the post. That was the closest they've got. Carey back again, Rowan Smith over the top, Wayne Stringer, close to the line again, and we'll see another throw in. Yes, there's a great number of people that are inside the oval boundary. I just saw Russell Evans try and call Kim Kinnear on, but Kim Kinnear's staying in the pocket. <laughs> oh, well, perhaps he's waiting for the breeze in the second quarter. Smith got the kick away very quickly. In comes Max Cruz. Did it superbly. Left boot, kick away. There's a free kick downfield for a high tackle on Max Cruz. Taking it back, Pete. It'll go back, if they can get it back. Bomber Clifford and Alan Stringer were fighting over the ball. Can you imagine that? Cruz kicks superbly. Up past centre wing, three Port Adelaide players, but there was a push in the back to Scott Salisbury. West, in fact. He thought about playing on and does. Alan Stringer changes tack now. Donovan 
the handball put him under pressure. But he's a pretty cool player, Donovan. Puts it back to centre half forward. Kernahan McDermott. Copping superb. Marshall's on the run. He doesn't miss. And he doesn't this time. His first goal, Glenel 5-2, Port Adelaide 2 points. You call it well, Peter. A superbly skilled player, David Marshall. He rarely misses uh, a shot for goal on the move. And that was another classic example of the immaculate skills of David Marshall. Took the hand pass, had a quick look and potted it right through the centre. That's Glenelg's fifth goal and Port must do something about this. They must do something about this because the, it certainly is a six-goal breeze and the way Glenelg are going, they're going to get their six. Are they ever, Graham? Over 14 minutes gone, so there's still six minutes plus to get to a few more goals. And what a brilliant effort then from Stephen Copping to tap that ball across. The throw or the bounce down. Smithing ruck for Port Adelaide now. Gets it towards Anderson. He can't get the ball out. Donovan comes to meet it. Wobbles the left foot away. Did it well. David Kernahan giving chase on the outer side. Curtis comes to meet it. Kernahan did well to get it away from that player. Over towards Scott Duncan. This is the boy from up at, uh, in this area. And Port Adelaide have quite a few of them, believe you me. Quickly, it is Boyd. Gets the handball over towards centre wing. Looking over there for Hines. Marshall goes down. Through goes Boyd again. And the umpire will ball it back in. We've just had a progress score from Jamestown. Centrals 2-1 lead North Adelaide a point. That's at Jamestown in the other game, the other Sunday game. And, of course, the final games of the fifth round of the Escort Cup and the final to be played, as Peter told you earlier, on April 7, one against two and three against four. April 8, I beg your pardon, one day out. Don't turn up on the seventh. Anderson. Plays it straight up the centre-half forward. Foster's behind. Carey in front. He's been paid the mark, and the big chap played a great first quarter. Again, he looks for the short one with his fifth kick. Rowan Smith nearly. Tony Hall nearly. He's on it now. The handball a bit quick to Wayne Stringer. It bounced off his knee. He's working hard. He got a push in the back. And it's his free kick. Umpire's right on the spot. Umpire's Mackey and John Hilton. Wayne Stringer is on the defence side of centre. He puts it out to right half forward flank. Big pack of players there. Kidney and Scott Duncan. The latter has the ball on the ground. And umpire Hilton will bounce it. Very well. Very well done by Scott Duncan. Then to put his body in line with that ball and uh, stop... Rob Kidney from getting away with it. Well done. Umpire Hilton puts it down. West in ruck. Very strong man, Jim West. So is Alan Stringer. McDermott, Hall. Glenelg finding the loose players. Hall puts it up towards Copping. Too far for that player. John Simpson very quick. Copping looks a little bit restricted in his running action at the moment. Big leap there by Harrison. Couldn't take the mark. Kicks the ball forward. He gets reasonable distance with that. Oh, Gibbs was always going to mark it. They call him Mr. Cool, and uh, he was very cool on that occasion. You, you watch the kick. No, he's going to go short. Anderson. Well, watch the kick. <laughs> See. Rowan. Rowan Smith. Foster's out at, uh, in the pocket. He got clear of his opponent. Left boot. How good is it? Straight across cross goals it comes, and in goes Russell Evans. He ran past it. Max Cruz, superb judgment. Maynard. Kinnear, out of bounds. Graham, I get the impression Port Adelaide might have gone on the defence a little bit then because their forwards got caught horribly out of position when the ball went into attack. There was about three bays to one Port Adelaide forward. Right. Uh, I would say that they have got an extra bike across the half-back line at the moment. Darren Smith appears to be down there. Um, so they certainly have done something with their... It's also very setup. easy for the forwards to be caught up the field, isn't it, going looking for the ball? Sure. I think Martin Leslie might be the loose player. Thank you, Peter. Ball on the half-forward line. Port Adelaide through Kinnear. Stringer getting back in defence, close to the line. Gets the kick away. Centre field. Harrison got a bad bounce. Anderson getting it beautifully across. Boyd dummies around. Kicks into the man. He's got to go and get it again. Back there is Cruz. Now David Kernahan. Out wider still. Donovan got a bad bounce. Looks for backup support. Took a high knock. Will get a free kick. And he gets it at centre half back. 5-2 to two points. Over 18 minutes gone. Donovan at centre-half back to put the uh, Tigers up towards centre field again. Kick number four, Donovan. Up towards West. Kidney beautifully done. But the handball away wasn't all that good. Back in defence, it was Curtis. Likewise, the handball wasn't that good. Actually, it was Leslie who got it out. Now Smith, high back towards centre field. Harrison's going to have to work hard for this. Hines got a bad 
one. Seabone to Wayne Stringer. A long kick into attack up towards the full forward. Simpson up high also. David Harvey couldn't mark the ball. Plenty of players in there. Coffin comes out with it. Handballed it out. Got dragged. There's a free kick going to Paul Ace. He didn't have the ball when he was tackled either. So Port Adelaide's last 10 minutes has been a lot better than its first eight or nine. Martin Leslie now. He looks a bit restricted in that running action. Very proppy. Cool. Holding the ball. That was a top tackle then by Salisbury. He just went straight into him. Gave him no chance at all. The kick not too flash. They're going to come away again through ball A's. Centre wing now. The whistle is gone. Has it ever. He hasn't stopped blowing it. There's another free kick going to Garton this time against Leslie. So Garton gets his first kick. He can kick a long way. He's got the breeze behind him. Puts it right up into the square. Copping is going back, but too high, too tall, John Simpson. Ex-Woodville. Ex-Carlton. Ex yeah. I think he may have played a couple of games for Carlton. Harrison surrounded by Glenelg players. David Harvey through. He got a free kick. But the umpire said play on. Good umpiring. Jeffrey Phelps. The kick is going to find Ross Gibbs. Foster comes in. Also Evans. And the Gibbs uh, kick went straight to uh, Wayne Stringer. Into the centre of the ground. Marshall is there. So is Kernahan. Good call by Kernahan. Marshall heard it when the ball is about five metres away. Kernahan out to right half forward flank. Oh, what a great, great man. Anderson. Shoot. He was outnumbered there. He had to go for it. He gave it to Scott Duncan. Rowan Smith on the outer side of the ground, but so is Donovan. Cool as you like, Woodlands. Way over there at right half forward flank. Short again to Maynard. They're playing keepings off at the moment, Glenelg. It's in a bad spot there, though, Peter, to score from. Be a freak kick for a goal. Maynard can do freakish things, though. He's going to put it into the square. Up they go. Phelps there couldn't take the mark. Very close to siren time here at the central Port Augusta Oval as uh, Scott Duncan clears. Gets it way out there towards Anderson and uh, another good mark. Playing well. Playing well, Greg Anderson. Anderson on the half-back line. Drives up centre field. No Port Adelaide player home. Big Super's back there. He can't get it out. There's the siren to end the first quarter. And well, the Bays at the 14-minute mark were five goals, too. If you recall, I mentioned that to two points. They had six minutes plus to add to their score, but they couldn't. And, Graham, this could have been the fact that, that Port Adelaide did go on the semi-defensive. Yeah, I believe they were semi-defensive, Ian, but they, they, they primarily attacked that quarter, which I thought was the wrong tactic. Uh, to score two points into this breeze might be a valuable two points, depending how well the Bays go. But it is a strong breeze, very difficult to score into, and it remains to be seen how well the Bays can do. The situation here... Uh... At quarter time, Glenelg 5-2, Port Adelaide 2 points. We'll have the second quarter right after the break. It's quarter time here at the Central Oval at Port Augusta. Quarter time scores Glenelg 5-2, Port Adelaide 2 points. Uh, Glenelg have got 5 goal scorers. They've got uh, Hall, Marshall, Copping, Maynard and Jim West. And uh, in day, uh, we were mentioning uh, off air that uh, many Port Adelaide players playing with the league side started their careers in the Spencer Golf League. You're correct, Peter. If you recall, we said that the largely pro Port Adelaide crowd and you can understand when these players either started their league careers or their football careers up here uh, or in this area. David Hines, Daryl Borlase, Darren Foster, Russell Evans, Jeff Phelps, Scott Duncan, Darren Smith and David Harvey. Almost half the Port Adelaide side started their football career in the north. And just incidentally, we've got a quarter time score at Jamestown or from Jamestown. Central's 3-2 lead North Adelaide 1-2. Graham, the situation in the second quarter, obviously Port Adelaide need to get into the act quickly. Long kicks are the answer to it all, Peter. Um, early in, in the first quarter, I said that Ross Gibbs would go for a long one, and he confounded me by young short. I think the only way to contend with a bruise like this is to kick it as long as you can, and hopefully someone pops up where it lands and uh, picks it off and kicks a goal, because trying to pinpoint passing in these conditions is very difficult. Uh, we've seen uh, a couple of good old players try it, Scott Salisbury in particular, tried a short pass, went to nobody, and yet Peter Carey picked off uh, copying at one stage of the business in the first quarter when he did attempt the same sort of a short pass. But to my way of thinking, 
the deal is get it and kick it as far as you can because this breeze is definitely going to carry the ball a long way. Well, I'm not so sure about that, Graham. I, I've got a feeling it might be swinging around and uh, looking across Glenelg's uh, half back line, we notice that there are four players standing there, so they may have already gone defensive. Anyway, at the start of the second quarter here, Glenelg 5 2, Port Adelaide 2 points. At the centre bounce, it's going to be David Baker against Super Carey. A good bounce by the umpire. Carey got the tap away towards centre wing. Anderson goes through, left the footy behind. He's still working in there for it. Bomber comes out with it. Couldn't get a kick away. And now a chance for the base to go in. Woodland's having his first run for the afternoon. Up towards full forward. Harvey against Garton. Um, Port Adelaide get it out through Curtis. He got it there from Simpson. And finally Harrison runs it out of defence to Clifford. Clifford on the defensive corner of the square. Wobbles an awkward kick up towards the half forward line. Seabone ought to have marked it. He didn't. Now Rowan Smith seeks the aid of Leslie. Port Adelaide into attack up towards full forward. Foster's up there. He can't get the ball. Gibbs comes to meet it. Gibbs gets hung on to when he hasn't got the ball. Can he is not happy? I would think 15 metres, so Gibbs just ducked the chutney in time, or as he would have got his head knocked off with a footy. A bit lucky with that one. How did you see it, Graham? I thought he had control of it. I saw it holding the ball. I think he took possession, let go straight away. To my way of thinking, he was looking for the free kick, and the umpire fell for it. Ross Gibbs it is. He will clear for the base. Comes up towards centre wing on grandstand side. Quick kick away there by Russell Boyd. Didn't go very far. Went into a pack of players. Believe it or not, Alan Stringer on the bottom of that pack. He doesn't mind that. He likes attacking the ball at ankle level, doesn't he? He thrives on it, Peter. <laughs> Peter Carey and David Baker. Peter Carey clearly had the honours in the first quarter. Kick away there by Russell Evans. Into that very deep pocket there. Max Cruz shoots out the handball. It was very well done too to McDermott. Max Cruz playing pretty well. Baker. Harrison. Here's a go now for Port Adelaide. Superbly done, Harrison. That wasn't too flash. Bomber's in a lot of trouble now. Might have got a free kick, but uh, unlucky, you missed it. Doofy. Kernahan. Seabone. Glenelg running it out with power. And legs. Chris Doofy, he's on centre wing. It's not a bad run down. Stephen Copping and John Simpson now will fight for the ball on the outer side of the ground, but we'll see a throw in. I was going to say, Pete, and Ian uh, Bomber couldn't believe that. He thought he, he earned a free kick then. I thought they earned two. I thought a kicking to the danger might have gone Port Adelaide's way too. Uh, but, uh, and the uh, original tackle on Bomber Clifford was a little clumsy. Not to worry. Baker against Jim West. The bodies go in. Baker's tap away. McDermott against, uh, in their 18 for Port Adelaide is Arlen Kennedy. But the ball goes out of play once more. Well, Port making little leeway in the opening minutes of this second quarter. Seven Sport at Port Augusta, the central oval for the big clash, the final one in the minor round of the Escort Cup. Phelps, oh, that's a huge kick up towards the half forward line. Foster Cooden, Salisbury in there, got Moan into the ground. Doothy lost the footy. Players working in hard for the ball. Finally, Seabone gets collared by Foster, and the umpire said the ball was being held to that player and he'll come in and bounce at centre-half forward. Gee, there's a lot of players around the ball at the moment. There's got to be at least 20. Over comes Carey from the back. Taken there by Anderson. He puts in a long one, but he's there again. Ross Gibbs. Oh, no, was it? Well, yes, it was Gibbs. He's a very good player. He gave it to Salisbury. Kernahan won't get that from, well, before it goes over the line, so we'll see it throw in. That breeze seems to be coming towards the grandstand now, whereas in the first quarter it was going down the ground. The Port Adelaide are going to have to really work this out to stay in the game. Through goes McDermott. Head down. Well, that ball's holding up. Only got 25 metres with that one. Ball lays. Baker. Arlen Kennedy. He'll go back on it. He's got to run at goal. Simpson comes in and lends a hand. He did that well, John Simpson. Way down from half back, in fact. Put it up in the air. A chance for Port Adelaide. Outnumbered, though. Up hands Russell Evans. He had to get rid of it quick. And gee, the Glenelg tackling then was super fast. Yes, Glenelg definitely have an extra bloke in their back line, Peter. Ross Gibbs is playing on nobody at the moment. Well, he normally wins when he's playing on somebody, so playing on nobody, he's going to cause havoc down there. Carey took it out of the air. Glenelg 
trying to clear, but it's gone over the line again. By that I mean Scott Salisbury appears to have gone into a back pocket, leaving Ross Gibbs virtually floating around, just buying into the play when he feels like it. So he's on nobody now, see Peter? In the square? As, as he, yes, I agree, Graham. As his former coach, you realise that he's got the ability to read the ball beautifully, Graham. And, uh, of course, on that occasion when the ball came in very quickly indeed, he was standing on his lonesome, and uh, he's looking a little lost there. Well, he doesn't know who to play on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he's playing in between the play at the moment. Half his luck. Wouldn't it be nice if you never had an opponent when you were playing? A throw-in in the right forward pocket or clumsy leap there by Hines, uh, Hines. Leslie with the ball, can't get it clear, clip it in and the umpire will come in and bounce once more. I think the bait ploy will be to bottle up as much as they can in this quarter. They've got a handy 30 point lead. Well, what happened Peter? David Conan played half four Frank the first quarter but he's on the wing now leaving Scott Salisbury to go back to, to his normal back pocket spot. The umpire has seen a free kick for the Bays. It's going the way of, no, against Peter Carey. I thought, whoa, there was a little bit of a Donnybrook behind the play there. Rowan Smith and Peter Maynard by the looks of things. I thought the initial free had gone for Carey, but it went against him. And I think that it's going to be as a David Hines who gets the free kick. Hines from 35 metres out, pretty acute angle, wind assisted but it's still not an easy kick because the wind is very blustery. Hines kick underway, it is offline for a point. Well, Port Adelaide just uh, can't do much at this point. Uh, that's the first score for this quarter. So that's an indication that uh, they perhaps aren't going too well as Ross Gibbs goes to the outer side. Two Port Adelaide players out there, Arlen Kennedy, thought about Kinnear, but then he back to centre half forward. Seaboam spoil was brilliant. Baker. Russell Evans, long handball back to Arlen Kennedy, he'll have another go. That's a better kick, right up towards Foster, but he can't mark the ball and it's run out of bounds on the out, on the other side of the, go, of the point post. Well, that was a classic example of conceding ground to get a clear shot for goal, Pete. Still didn't work. Porter doing nothing right at the moment. Big crowd here at the Central Oval as Hines pushes it back with the left hand. Comes to Bomber Clifford, can he kick a goal? What a quick left foot snap, Bomber Clifford. Port Adelaide took 28 minutes to get their first goal. 5-2 plays 1-3, ball in the centre. Salisbury tried to get it out. Finally winding his way through the pack there was Woodlands. The kick was a shocker. Sent into attack by Port Adelaide up towards the half forward line. Boyd it was. Leslie gets the handball out too far for Rowan Smith. Back to Kinnear up towards full forward. Gibbs sets himself again. Once again reading the play beautifully. Score from Jamestown again. North, 2-3, Central's 3-2. Cruz took the mark there at uh, half-back flank. 5-2, Glenelg, Port Adelaide 1-3. Salisbury flanked him then for the handball, but Cruz will try and bring it down towards centre wing. See, the wind's got hold of that ball. It's going to drag it right out. Wasn't on the full load, so we'll see it throw in just the attack side of centre wing for Port Adelaide. So I'll need to get into the act. Baker outbodied by Peter Carey again. Marshall ran into Russell Boyd. Anderson used the right boot then to centre half forward. Leslie comes across. Can't take the mark. Alan Stringer waits down. The handball went straight to Seabone. He went for the line. I thought he went to the Port Adelaide runner. I think he probably thought that, that was a running player for him backing up, Graham. I'm sure he did. Oh, well, well, some advantage in having the runner out there. There we go. They can't get the ball out. Peter Carey couldn't. The umpire's going to bounce. Peter, there's only six players ahead of centre at the moment. That's just how congested the uh, the left of your screen is. Nine minutes gone. Port Adelaide have made an impression of one goal, one. The Bays haven't scored into the breeze. The ball on their half forward left flank at the moment. And I think a free kick is going to be picked out there. Sometimes the crowd just get in our road as the ball becomes close to the or gets close to the fence. Leslie puts the ball in high. A, a free kick against Port Adelaide. Arguing with umpire John Hilton is Martin Leslie. The ball is being relayed back 45, 50 metres upfield for Robin Kidney to get a free kick after a slight scuffle in with Martin Leslie. He obviously didn't agree with the decision. Both barrels to umpire Hilton. Kidney off the half-back line. 
In there is Phelps, couldn't get it. Baker could. Returns the ball to the half forward line. Salisbury dropped it. Stringer in defence, a high floating kick. That'll go back over his head if he waits much longer. The ball got very high up in the air. It was well taken by Kinnear. A drive to the half forward line. Kerry lumbers to meet it. The big fellow floats one back again. It's struggling to make distance against the breeze. Beautifully read off hands. Peter Maynard drives the ball up towards the half forward line. Garlon guts it. Gives it over to Copping. Oh, it's run! Oh, what a position to throw the ball in. Woodland was out wider still. He could have run into the open goal and I've lost it. And it's Harvey to transfer play out to Curtis. Well, Garton's really having a, a nightmare in the last couple of weeks. He's not getting the ball that often. When he got it that time, he threw it. Harrison, Kennedy, running through half forward now. He'll kick long to centre half forward. Big pack there, no mark. Boyd, that ball's going to float right back. But there he is again. Ross Gibbs on his own and takes the mark. There's that man again. He's everywhere. The Ross elusive Gibbs. Pimpernel. He bobs up. Always unopposed. 11 minutes into the second quarter. Five kicks, Ross Gibbs. Leslie was pushed in the back then. Seabone was caught behind him and uh, Leslie ran in. He stopped. Seabone kept going and there's a push in the back decision. It was the correct decision. Yes, and a relatively easy shot for goal for Martin Leslie. A man who's played nine-tenths of his football career on the back line. A great kick of the ball normally. So he's got a golden opportunity to get Port's second goal. Do they ever need it? Well, he's gone right out towards the pocket. That win playing havoc. Big leave Hines. It's being paid. No. Another free kick there. and It'll go to Ross Gibbs. In the back pocket. Certainly well in the game. Beautifully passed to Seabone. Gee, he can certainly kick a ball. In fact, in last year's grand final, he did a drop kick. Yes, the closing stages. Alan Stringer. He's at half back. Grinnell playing keepings off now. Peter Carey. Gee, if I was standing Peter Carey, I think I'd be alongside of him. Again, short. Maynard pops in. Superbly done by Glenelg. Port Adelaide has not touched the ball since Ross Gibbs had it. West has got it now. That's incredible against the wind. Horrible. Here's the chance again. But agree here. Yeah. They have not touched the ball. Seven Glenelg players. Seven kicks, seven marks, seven players involved. And Port Adelaide haven't smelled it. And what a great left foot kick. The final... Uh, Run by Stephen Copping to find Craig Woodlands almost unopposed. Yes, he bent that ball right around. Well, we won't see better football than that. Woodlands with his fourth kick sets it up. He did what Port Adelaide couldn't do. He's got a goal. The Bays by 29 points. West sends them into attack again up towards the half forward line. Getting back in defence there is Simpson. Drives the ball back towards the half-back flank and there it's taken by Boyd on the half-back line. Boyd gets 15 metres to boot. The Bays by 29 points. Port Adelaide will want to get off their bottoms in a minute. A long kick over to the outer side. Forster there. Thumped away by Duthie. Kernahan will be first there. Leslie giving chase as well. Kernahan under pressure. Thumps the ball clear. Good football. Seabone. Gets it over now to Duthie on the outer side. The Bays go forward again. Gee, Port Adelaide can't find them. Can't check at all. They run along now through Maynard. Marshall over the half forward line. They go up towards full forward. Woodman's at the back of the pack. Wants it. Getting back in defence, however, it is Scotty Duncan who drives the ball back and well pinpoints out Kinnear at centre half. Back. Kinnear thought about playing off. Kinnear. A long kick up towards the centre wing spot getting underneath the ball out there. Gee, he'll have to get a free kick is uh, Russell Evans. is a high tackle. And Russell Evans to put the Magpies into attack. A long way behind. 29 points, in fact. Long kick up forward, but Peter Carey again, he just eats that. Foster is there, puts it out wide now to Ross Gibbs. I think Russell Evans might be well, and well advised to have someone stand, Ross Gibbs. Seems a bit strange when they're going against the breeze, but the way it's turning out... With Mark David Marshall, Glenelg toying with Port Adelaide at the moment. Smith over the top of uh, Anderson. I think Porter a bit rattled. Max Cruz went in hard. Now Russell Boyd. Salisbury on his own there. Couldn't take the mark. Now Donovan. He clears towards the centre wing boundary. And that ball may well run out. McDermott close to the line. Puts the fist to it. And we'll see a throw in. Score from Jamestown, Central District 3-3, trailing North Adelaide now 3-4. Certainly a lot closer there than it is here. 
over the top Smith, or he tried to, but it didn't work. Alan Stringer. McDermott. Grubbers one away. Went through Phelps. Kidney. Couldn't get it back far enough. Phelps in hard. Anderson. Or a pack of players, and there'll be a bounce. Umpire Mackie will have lied. Of course, Port Adelaide must win this afternoon. Otherwise, it's going to be a Glenelg South Adelaide final in the Escort Cup. But if Port Adelaide win, they edge south out, and it will be a Glenelg final. And then in South will play against West in the uh, third and fourth playoff. Kidney, McDermott. Hard football at the moment over the top of his head. And the umpire said it was touched before it went out on the full. So it's a throw in at centre wing. 6-2 to 1-3. Must be very close to half time here at Central Oval, Wyala. You're seeing the Escort Cup through seven sport. Live. Throw in. Maynard. Edges the ball into attack. But the Bays have done a lot better into the breeze than Port Adelaide did in the first quarter. And they've got a handy margin of 29 points. A throw in now in their right forward pocket. It's going to be West in opposition to Smith of Port Adelaide. Smith makes front spot. Taps the ball down. Finally gets back to now McDermott. McDermott high in towards full forward. Garon sends himself at the back. Woodland. Boy, he's got to do something. Through one in goal. Second. 7-2 Glenelg. 1-3 Port Adelaide. Brilliantly done the Bays. Great work there by Woodlands to get two goals in uh, one quarter against the Breeze. Although, as we've mentioned, the Breeze is playing tricks. Woodlands was brilliant then. He's always in the right position at the right time, and with the assistance of Garten, when he finally took it off him, all he had to do was kick the ball over the line. So Glenelg 7-2, Port Adelaide 1-3. At the centre bounce, 5-3 Central, 3-5 North Adelaide at Jamestown. Centre line bounce down. Well, both got up very early. Anderson got it a few metres. New player on the ground by the looks of things for Port Adelaide. The other Boyd is on. This time it's Greg Boyd. But the uh, Port Adelaide side goes to their half forward line where it goes out of play. 7-2 to 1-3. The Magpies have troubles. And certainly they don't look the side that we've seen in previous Escort Cup games. And that's taken nothing away from the Bays. Russell Evans drives in towards full forward. The ball thumped clear. Here's a chance now for Greg Boyd if he can control it. He's close to the line. Gets round or does he? Couldn't shake off the tackle. Russell Evans or Forster unloaded, holding the ball, and the free kick will go in defence to Scott Salisbury. 18 minutes into this second quarter, so time running out for Port Adelaide. They've been outscored by the Bays, leaving Ross Gibbs unattended in the back line. Glenelg have had, been able to set it up beautifully from there. They've bounced off. Been advised officially that there were well over 5,000 people here at the start of the game, and at that time, there were still long lines of people queued up to get in. Jeffrey Phelps tries to push it forward. Anderson, he'll pump the ball forward. Here's a chance for Port Adelaide, but Ross Gibbs again. Gee. He's playing with them at the moment. Puts it out to Kernahan. He's got a paddock to work in. Now up to centre wing, Simpson in front of Copping, but Copping nearly grabbed it. He gets back on it first. That's a good tackle, Smith. A very good tackle. Nothing Copping can do about that. That's what you call a perfect tackle. Smith now back to centre half forward. A big leap, Donovan, no mark. Chance Port Adelaide. Kinnear's kick off line. Oh, he's out of bounds on the full. So Ross Gibbs will have another kick in. Yes, I think this is his 10th kick, Peter. But, gee, it's the way he gets them. And uh, he certainly unites a back line. His coolness under pressure is extraordinary. And I'm sure he must be a great confidence booster to the players around him. Gibbs, not one of his better kicks as it floats towards the line. Seabom in. Anderson hooks the ball back into play, into the forward pocket, coming to meet it. Well, who do you reckon it would be? Ross Gibbs again. A kick by now for Gibbs. That's his sixth mark he's taken. Wayne Stringer. 7-2 to 1-3, close to half time. Stringer edges the ball out of defence, up towards West at the back. Stringer in front, aerial ping-pong at the moment there. The ball comes out to Anderson. He threw that, the umpire didn't see it. Now it's taken away by Boyd up towards the half-forward line. That's Russell Boyd. 
well marked by his brother Greg. Now he can kick the distance almost from there. You'll have to take outside the right goal post. Richie does, puts it on its way. Oh gee, that breeze is enormous. It came back at least the width of the goal post to miss on the left hand side of the big upright. And now it's 7-2 Glenelg to 1-4 Port Adelaide. Must be very close to the break. In fact, about a half a minute to go in this uh, first half of football here. We're at the Central Oval at Port Augusta. Great scene here is Mark taken by Alan Springer. We guess at the Spencer Golf League and uh, have certainly looked after us and the players. Peter Carey is just the defence side of centre wing. 7-2 Glenelg, Port Adelaide 1-4. Wayne Stringer marks again. A number of times that Glenelg have been able to find players with good disposal has been tremendous. Eighth kick now coming up for Wayne Stringer. He's played well. Kicks it up towards Jim West, but the siren has gone to end the first half of football here at the Central Oval at Port Augusta. And it's been Glenelg's game so far, 7-2 to Port Adelaide 1-4. And uh, in that quarter end, it was just amazing to see the way that Glenelg could maintain possession and uh, set it up for Craig Woodlands to boot two. Yes, Peter, I'm, I'm disappointed and I'm certain that Russell Ebert and the Port Adelaide followers would be disappointed as well with the way that Port Adelaide just lost their players. They weren't putting any pressure on them at all and now that's foreign to Port Adelaide in 1986. In the previous games we've seen them play in the Escort Cup, gee, they've tackled fiercely, their commitment was there and no one got an easy kick on the opposition side. But in that second quarter, uh, as you said, in particular, when they were kicking with the breeze, all of a sudden, I don't know where everyone was crowding up forward trying to get a kick at goals but uh, the Bays just ran the ball out of defence with consummate ease and uh, they were able to, to attack into that breeze in fact they kicked two goals whereas Port Adelaide can only kick two points and those two goals could be match winning goals in the final summary. Well they could be in and you made the point that at the 14 minute mark of the first quarter that Glenelg had its in fact its whole first quarter score now Port Adelaide then put a player in defence it worked we noticed that Glenelg had a player in defence right from the start of the second quarter and that obviously worked too so the situation here at the Central Oval at Port Augusta, Glenelg in control, 7-2 to Port Adelaide, 1-4.